Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on antiderivatives and the indefinite integral. In this chapter we'll be taking everything that we learned about differential calculus and sort of looking at it from the other perspective. So instead of asking what is the derivative of a function, we'll be asking what function would have given this as a derivative. We use the notation big F to indicate the antiderivative and typically it's the simplest function that differentiates to the one that we're interested in. So down here I have 10 different functions listed, 3x squared plus 2x minus 3, etc. And I think one of the questions you want to ask yourself is, well, where could they have come from? Like I know that the derivative of this one is 6x plus 2, but what it would have differentiated to 3x squared plus 2x minus 3? And maybe the most helpful thing to do is to pause the video right now and take a guess at all of these. It really doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. What matters is that you get, start to get some sort of insight as to where these terms are coming from. So maybe just pause, give it a go, and we're back. So this first one, I look at that 3x squared, I think an x squared needs to come from an x cubed. Okay, so and an x right here needs to come from an x squared, and a regular constant needs to come from some sort of x term. That's my guess as to the antiderivative of this one. And I can always check it by differentiating. So if I differentiate this, let's see what I get. I'd get 3x squared plus 2x minus 3, kind of like checking factoring by foiling. We're doing the opposite operation, and since it got us back where we started, this is the correct antiderivative. For the next one, what will differentiate 2, e to, e to the x? I think it'll be e to the x. Let me check by differentiating e to the x. Yeah, it gives me e to the x again, so it must be correct. The next one I'm going to take a little guess. So let's see, it's got e to the 3x. I mean, my guess is maybe its antiderivative is e to the 3x. And let me check that by differentiating. It would be e to the 3x when I differentiate it, but I'd have a 3 from the chain rule. So I'd actually get something that is too big. I would not get back where I started. I'd get something that's 3 times too big. But getting that wrong answer actually helps me. I know that when I do it uh, without anything out front, I'm getting something that's 3 times too big. So I'll just put a 1 third in front. And now I can check. If I differentiated that, I'd get 1 third times e to the 3x times, from the chain rule, a 3. Oh my gosh, it would get me back where I started. We'll have some rules in a minute, um, but again, I just think it's worthwhile to guess and test these, because if you know your differentiation really well, anti-differentiation can be very, very intuitive. So this one over here, 5, differentiates to 0, but it sort of comes from 5x. I like to think of it this way. Here's f of x. You can sort of differentiate downwards But up above regular f of x is big F. That's the antiderivative. All right, cosine. What differentiates to cosine? Sine x differentiates to cosine. We could just try it. Um, in fact, maybe I'll draw that little wheel of trig that I've been using. And in the notes, if you've downloaded them, uh, there is some space to do some rough work on the next slide. There's nothing written there. So this is what we knew about trig. They differentiate. Sine goes to cosine. Cosine goes to negative sine. But if you anti-differentiate, it actually goes in the other direction. Okay, so the green one here is the antiderivative. So sort of cosine comes from sine. Okay, similarly, what would be the antiderivative of sine x? Well, it would be negative cos x. And I can check that by differentiating negative cos x. Okay, it would give me negative that I had to begin with. The derivative of cos x is negative sine x, so I'd end up with positive sine x. So this is all looking OK. And here's another one with a pesky number. So if the antiderivative of sine x was negative cos x, my guess is this one's going to be negative cos 3x. And then I can check it by differentiating. So I'll get negative, negative sine 3x. And then from the chain rule, I get a 3. Oh, no, it's 3 times too big again. Well, that's OK. We can just fix that by putting a one-third out front. 
So getting a wrong answer is just a step on the way to hopefully getting the right answer. The next one's asking, what differentiates 2, 1 over x? Well, that would be ln x. And it would actually be ln absolute value of x, because we need it to exist for both positive and negative numbers. Um, but if you said ln x, that's excellent. So this next one equals 3 times 1 over x. So its antiderivative would be 3 ln of absolute value over x. And here comes the very last and sort of most important one. And it harkens back to the very first question we did here. Uh, when you differentiate, when you anti-differentiate x squared, you got x cubed. Okay. The power goes up when you anti-differentiate. So it's going to go up by 1. It's going to become x to the 7 thirds plus 1, or x to the 10 thirds. And when I check that through differentiation, what will I get? I'll get the 10 thirds will come down front, and I'll get the correct power. But it's too big by a factor of 10 thirds. So how do we do, deal with that? We fight it by putting a 3 tenths out front. So as a rule, essentially, power goes up by 1, and the flip of the new power comes down front. That is very similar to our power rule when we had derivatives, uh, but now we're going in the opposite direction. So a couple of things to notice here. Sometimes a coefficient on x causes issues in the antiderivative because of the chain rule. But you can always check your antiderivatives. Sorry, you can? No, 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 no. You must always check your antiderivatives by differentiating. Just like you'll always be better at multiplying than dividing, you'll probably always be better at differentiating than antidifferentiating. If when you check they don't work, Chances are it's just too big or too small by some factor, and you can correct that with a coefficient. So there's an intuitive look at how we would do some of these. Uh, let's get some rules. So here are a bunch of rules. Some of them are beyond the scope of the math AASL course. Um, but the antiderivative of a constant is that constant times x x to the n. This is the most important one. Power goes up by 1, and the flip of the new power goes in front. That only works if n is not equal to negative 1. If n is equal to negative 1, then we have this case over here. And we already know that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So this is just working backwards. If you have a 1, x, 1 over x, then its antiderivative will be ln of absolute value of x. Now, often when we work with these, we'll only be using positive values anyway, so the absolute value won't matter that much. e to the x, just like the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Sine and cosine. Well, this stuff is all in the formula booklet, but I think that you should really think about wheel of trig. And if you get the first couple of terms right, everything is fine. You differentiate clockwise, and you anti-differentiate counterclockwise. Really, it's these ones here that are important. Uh, if you're ever to run into this other one in the Math AA course, uh, the SL course rather, you would see this as 1 over co squared. That's what secant squared is. And you probably wouldn't run into any of these other ones over here on the right-hand side. Uh, they're beyond the scope of the course, but you may run into them someday. So that brings us to the end of this little bit on antiderivatives. Maybe I'll take one or two of the ones that we did before and just take a look at how they'd work with the rules. Here's the first one that was on the first page. So if I were to do it with all the rules, a lot of the rules for antidifferentiation are similar to differentiation rules. Coefficients stay. But here's what's going to happen. The power goes up by 1, and the flip of the new power comes down front. 2 to the x, or 2x rather, power goes up by 1, flip of the new power goes in front. And the antiderivative of a constant is that constant times x. And so we'd get x cubed plus x squared minus 3x, which we would still go and check we find the, the derivative of the antiderivative and ask ourselves, does that get us back where we started? 
Heck yes, it gives us f of x again, so this must have been a correct antiderivative. And typically, we look for the simplest possible one. Similarly, if we had had f of x is x to the 7 thirds, then it's antiderivative. Power goes up by 1, so it'll be 10 thirds, and flip of the new power goes in front. Okay, so when you see this 1 over n plus 1, you don't have to write it as 1 over 10 thirds. It's just the flip of whatever the new power is. In terms of practice, we can take a look at page 435, numbers 1 to 11, odd. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.